There are two things that I hate in this world. One of them is driving my wife's Prius. I hate this car. The other thing I don't like is the fact that there are people out there who drive to spend too much money on razors. You can go to dollarshaveclub.com slash Hooniverse and sign up, become a member, join the fun, and get these razors delivered to your door. On top of that, you get the razor handle. If you want more, you can get the shaving cream, you can get the butt wipes, you can get aftershave. There's a bunch of other stuff too. They have travel size products as well. So stop pretending like life is like driving this Prius, which is going to the store and spending too much money. This car sucks your soul. Driving to the store and buying the overpriced name brand razors does the same thing. Cut it out. Dollarshaveclub.com slash Hooniverse uh, and get on with your life and get your soul back like I'm about to do with this next car. God, I hate this car. certainly be a wonderful place if everybody in it could afford Hellcats. Be they Charger, be they Challenger, doesn't matter because we got 707 horsepower and 200 mile per hour top speeds. We don't live in that world though. Not everybody can afford a $64,000 car. While it's a relative bargain, it's also quite expensive for the average person. That's where a car like this comes in. This is the 2015 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack. It has a bigger motor than the Hellcat. It is basically a nod two Challengers of old. The design styling is plucked from the 1971 Challenger. The Scat Pack name comes from a package they offered from 68 to 71 until they were sued to stop selling it. Uh, what we've got here is essentially a base level car with the top tier motor. And thanks to the new interior here, it's not so base anymore. Maybe you don't need to drop 60 plus to enjoy the Hellcat world. You can just go scatting. So under the hood, we've got that Hemi, 392 cubic inch motor. That's 6.4 liters for the rest of you who measure cars by liters, which is most of us, granted. Nobody really does cubic inches anymore. But when it's this cool, you do do it in cubic inches. It's good for 485 horsepower and over 470 pound-feet of torque. You can have it with a six-speed manual gearbox, or like this car, you can have it with an eight-speed paddle shiftable automatic. Now, we'd prefer the manual. The manual is gonna be more fun. But the automatic doesn't let this car down. It is a rather slick eight-speed unit. Uh, surprisingly, it does shift a little harsh at times, but this is a harsh car, and that's not to be totally unexpected. So with that automatic gearbox and this big engine, this Challenger Scat Pack will run from zero to 60 in the mid four second range. The quarter mile, that'll be dispatched in about 12 seconds. That's plenty fast. Uh, this is a heavy car. I don't expect it to launch somewhere in the three second range, and it shouldn't. Four seconds is more than respectable, especially for the price point, especially for the noise, the fun, the comfort, and the styling you're getting here. This is a great package, and it starts right here with this badass motor. So. Dodge really refined the interior space of the Challenger here. Uh, it's driver focused, it's really nicely designed, it's a good blend of old style meets new needs, amenities, and looks. Uh, they didn't throw away their history, but they didn't just slap it on here either. It's a great balance. You've got this wonderful Uconnect screen here in the middle, easy to read, connects to your phone quickly and easily. Uh, all your controls are here. Down here, you've got your HVAC controls. I love when they're separate so you don't have to plod through menus to get to them, but you can operate some stuff from here as well. There's a really cool button here though called Sport. Put that on, the steering tightens up. The engine is more responsive. The suspension hunkers down a little bit. It just livens the car, but also eases up on traction control. You don't even need traction all the way off to do dumb shit like this. See? You can go full traction off though if you want, and you can get even stupider, which is fine. This car enjoys that stuff. It's a muscle car. It's big, heavy, stupid, but it's got so many smart systems keeping you from being a big, heavy, stupid person stuck on the side of the road in a ditch or upside down. So, the 
car we're riding in is not a Hellcat. It has a bigger motor though. It doesn't have that supercharger. It doesn't need it. This is the real muscle car in the Challenger lineup. In the Dodge lineup, period. Uh, two doors, rear wheel drive, two real seats. There are back seats, but torture to the kids back there. Uh, big, big V8 motor. 392 cubic inches, 6.4 liters of American goodness. This is the last true muscle car made in America. The only other company really doing muscle cars, honestly, is Mercedes, but that's a different subject. Now, where the Hellcat drives far better than you'd expect it to, it's a lot more nimble, this one doesn't exactly do that. At least it doesn't feel like it to me. I've only driven the Charger Hellcat, but I would have to assume it's fairly similar out on the road to the Challenger Hellcat, and I would, I would guess that they would drive the same. This Challenger Scat Pack, and it's hard for me to keep not saying Challenger and Charger, but this Challenger Scat Pack, uh, it does have upgraded suspension. It has upgraded brakes. Uh, it's got the big motor. It's got these nice, cushy, suede leather mixed seats. And I would like the manual gearbox here, which you can get, the six-speed. But I've got the eight-speed, and it does a surprisingly good job as well with the paddles here behind the wheel. It just doesn't feel as tossable as a Hellcat. It's controllable. You can get the tail out and do really dumb stuff. I was about to say shit. I should have just said shit. You can get the tail out and do really dumb shit, and it's a lot of fun, and you can roast the tires even with traction control not all the way off. You just hit the sport button, and it brings everything to a heightened sense of awareness. Uh, when you do that, you mash the throttle, and this is a very touchy throttle. Uh, in, in, in fact, around town, if you're just cruising and it's in sport, you can do a little bit of this off the line so you look like an idiot. Uh, but when you want to mash it, it goes right away. But that said, like I said, it's not possible, but it's, it's fun. It's big and stupid like a muscle car is supposed to be. In its sublime green paint, which is a nod back to the you know, Challengers of yore, uh, 68 through 71, this specifically is designed with cues from the 71 Challenger, like that split grill and the tail and it's out back. All of that together, it's a modern muscle car. It's, it's a nod to the past. That's what the original scat back cars were. You take the RT lower trim car and you throw the big engine at it. And that's exactly what they've done here. And that's awesome. Uh, if we could get the price a little bit lower, that'd be even better. This car starts at about $37,000, which isn't terrible. It, not terrible at all, frankly. Uh, but this one I'm driving right here is $45,000. That's getting up there now. Now you have to start thinking about other things you could get, and that list starts getting longer and longer and better and better. But if you want the one that's a true muscle car, if you want the one that's the Boulevard Cruiser tire destroyer noise-making awesome machine, you get the Challenger. <laughs> Right underneath the sport button is a cool button called Super Track Pack. You hit that and say goodbye to Danger Zone and bring up this. It shows you launch mode. You can set the RPM you want for launch mode. You can activate launch mode and go into launch control. You can also handle the drive mode. So when you pop it into sport, this is what you're going to have. The engine and trans, paddles, track control, and steering all in sport mode. But say you want steering and comfort and everything else, you can change that. You can also change how the default mode goes. You can't change the engine and trans to sport though. You can turn the paddles on, uh, you leave traction in uh, normal, but you can adjust steering. So, you know, pop it into sport and all that stuff comes alive. Over here though, this is what Chrysler calls the performance pages. I call it the cool shit pages. That's why I'm not in marketing though. This is the engine display. Uh, we're not moving, we're in park obviously, and you can see horsepower and torque. You know, you see it shoot up there. We're not going anywhere, so it's not gonna go too high. Run over here, you've got timers. This thing will track your zero to 60, your zero to 100, your eighth mile, your quarter mile, and your braking distance. It'll do your last, your best. It's, that's, I'm, I hate to use a swear here, but I love swearing, that's awesome. Go over here, you can see some gauges. Go over here, you can see some more gauges. Over here, you can see your G-forces. I mean, basically the GTR might have started doing this stuff, but the way that this is displayed here in the Chrysler, shows steering angle too, that's kind of cool, uh, is fantastic. So. They're, they're doing great stuff in the interior of this car, this being one of them. It shows they care about what enthusiasts or the people who buy a car like this, what they want.